Game Builder Garage is great. It features a simple yet surprisingly robust suite of tools for building your own creations, and the things the community have made with it are astounding. However, most GBG fans agree that one nodon leaves a lot to be desired, and that is the texture nodon. Anyone that's attempted to create anything more complex than a doodle in GBG knows it can take a very, very long time using the limited in-game tools. This will only take a second. Six and a half hours later. We're so close to being done. Nintendo has previously included far more robust texture editors in other games, such as Animal Crossing, WarioWare, and even Mario Paint from way back in 1992. These games included things like built-in shape tools, dithering tools, and even ways to share your textures with friends. But all of these tools are missing within GBG. That is, until now. Today we're going to be doing what Nintendo don't through the use of a set of tools created by Scrubs and Bori, two incredible members of the community who have used their talents to create a process that will take any picture you feed it, convert it, and then automatically draw it for you in GBG, making repetitive strain injury inducing texture drawing a thing of the past. Before we begin, I want to be clear that this will require some special hardware, with a total project cost of somewhere between £12 and £20 in your local currency. I also recommend you watch this whole video before you get started with your build in order to best prepare yourself for the process. Additionally, I'll be moving through this process at a relatively fast pace, so don't forget you can pause and rewatch this video as often as you need to until you feel confident about the process. With that in mind, let's begin. First, let's go over our parts list. You'll need an Arduino Leonardo. Arduino is a low-cost open-source microcontroller and it will act as the brain for our texture painter. You'll also need the included USB to micro USB cable, which is what we'll use to program the Arduino and connect it to our switch. And lastly, a couple of jumper wires, sometimes called DuPont wires. These are often sold as part of a project kit, which will usually come with extra things like buttons, a breadboard, and more. And you'll be able to augment your project with these extra parts if you so desire. Shortly, we'll be downloading four specific files for use in this project. I will talk about exactly what you need to do with these in a little while, but first, I'm just going to list them. You'll need the Arduino Arduino IDE software, Mouse2 Arduino library, Bori's AGTD sketch, and Scrub's GBG texture builder. The links for all of these are in the description of this video. First, let's talk about hardware. The setup I'll be using for this tutorial is incredibly simple. Grab a jumper wire and connect one end to pin 9 on your Arduino, and that's it. Yes, really. If you bought a project kit that includes some buttons and a breadboard, you could alternatively insert a button into the breadboard, making sure the pins are orientated correctly. Then, just as before, connect a jumper wire to pin 9 on the Arduino and a second onto ground. Attach each of these wires to each of the two sets of pins on the button like so. That's everything relating to hardware for now, so set aside your Arduino and head to your computer. Now onto the software. The first thing we'll do is download and install the Arduino IDE. Once you're on the Arduino website, choose the appropriate version of the software for you. I'm on Windows 10, so I chose Windows 7 or newer version. Arduino IDE is pay what you want, so you can either choose an amount or click just download to download it for free. Next, we'll download the Mouse2 library for use in the Arduino sketch. Again, the link to this is in the description. Once there, scroll down to download the most recent version of Mouse2 here and click the link. With both of these downloaded, it's time to install Arduino IDE. Navigate to your download folder and double click the exe. Proceed through the install wizard, and once the main part is done, click install on each of the Windows security prompts that appear. This is giving permission for the necessary drivers to be installed. Once you're done, you can close the installer and delete the original exe file. Next, let's open the newly installed Arduino IDE software and add the mouse2 library. To do this, go to Sketch, Include Library, Add.zip Library, and navigate to your download folder. Once there, select the Mouse 2 zip and click Open. Mouse 2 has now been added to Arduino IDE as a library that can be utilized in your project. Next, we'll download both of the community tools. These are hosted on the Video Dojo Hub Discord server, a link to which is in the description below. Once you're there, locate the Help and Tutorials channel and check the pinned messages. The first pin will include a link to a thread titled Texture Tools. Click this link and once there, download the latest version of Scrub's GBG Texture Builder and Bori's automatic GBG Texture Drawing Tool. Next, we're going to prepare our image for GBG using Scrubs' tool. Drag the newly downloaded GBG Texture Builder to a browser window to open it. 
Once open, click Choose File and locate the image you'd like to convert. I've chosen this picture of a cat, as it accurately depicts my emotional state at the end of a multi-hour long GBG texture drawing session. I recommend leaving the palette and scale options as default for now, although you can of course experiment with these to get different results. I left the dithering method as Floyd Steinberg, as this typically works best for photographs. None is the best option if you're working with an image that already utilizes the GBG texture palette and resolution. Next, scroll back up and click Generate. This will produce a preview of your image, and the last step is to click Download. You may see two download options here, as a new version of this tool is in the works while I record this. If that's the case, just make sure to click download.csv file. Next, let's return to our download folder and open up the AGTD tool we downloaded earlier. The first time you do this, you'll receive a message saying that the file needs to be located within a folder. Click OK and Arduino IDE will do this for you automatically. This screen may look intimidating, but I promise it's simple as we're only looking for one section within this sketch. Scroll down until you see a large string of numbers separated by commas. This is the texture information as it's stored for use by Arduino. By default, there are five sample textures included. Side note, each one of these sample textures was created by a member of the GBG community to showcase the strength of this tool. One of them was even made by a funny little space boy. If you'd just like to try out the tool using the sample textures included, you can skip this next step. Anyway, once you've located these numbers, use the scroll bar and go right until you reach the end of the last string of numbers, so you can click and drag to highlight all of them and delete. Next, open up your .csv file. That's the texture you converted earlier. This should open in Notepad or your preferred plain text editor. Once there, select all and copy the contents of the .cvs file and paste it into the Arduino IDE sketch in the same spot you deleted the samples. We're now very nearly ready to upload the sketch to our Arduino. Connect the Arduino to your PC using the micro USB to USB cable. Back in Arduino IDE, go to Tools, Board, and select Arduino Leonardo. After that, go back to Tools, Port, and select whichever port is labeled Arduino Leonardo. Now all that's left to do is click Upload, which is the arrow pointing right in the top left corner of the screen. Once you see the message Done Uploading, our sketch has been stored on the Arduino's SRAM, and you can now disconnect the Arduino from your PC. We're onto the home stretch now, and it's time to head to the switch. Within GBG, open either a new project if you're starting fresh, or an existing project if you're wanting to add textures to something you already started. Once there, open the programming screen. At this point, unplug any USB devices you have attached to the switch, including USB mice, and connect your Arduino. Take the loose end of the jumper wire and connect it to the input labeled GND for ground. Or if you're using the button setup described earlier, simply press the button. At this point, the Arduino will jump into action and you'll see a mouse cursor flying around the screen at high speed. Don't worry, your switch hasn't been possessed the Arduino is instead beginning to draw your texture. A single texture can take anywhere between approximately 2 minutes and 5 minutes to draw, depending on the complexity. So sit back and enjoy the strangely hypnotic process unfold. Ta-da! Once the process is done, disconnect the Arduino from the switch, and there you have it. Your texture will have been perfectly recreated in GBG. One really important note, make sure the jumper wire is disconnected from ground anytime you finish running the sketch, and before you connect it to your PC, to make sure you don't run the sketch when you don't mean to. If you're using the button setup, you don't need to worry about this. Additionally, here's a few things that I couldn't fit elsewhere in the video. As these community tools are still in active development, some aspects may change after this tutorial is released. In the case that there are any major changes, I'll add a pinned message in the comments section of this video that lists those differences. Additionally, I only scratched the surface of Bari's AGTD sketch. The version we used is basic mode, and it can store up to five textures at once. But there is also an advanced mode, which utilizes an SD card attachment for the Arduino, and can store way more textures. Here's Bari's development version that even includes a fancy mini 
mini TFT screen. Right now, the process I've shown today is only possible with an Arduino, but work is already underway to make this tool usable with something like Raspberry Pi, which, if successful, will open up this process to even more people. Thanks again to Bori and to Scrubs for creating and sharing these tools and for giving the community a brand new way to interact with GBG. I can't wait to see what the community does with these amazing tools. And I really think this is just the beginning of expanding what we can do with GBG. If Nintendo won't update GBG, I guess we'll just have to. Anyway, happy building and bye bye.